All right, welcome to the TWC Leadership Podcast. This is where we take uh, uh, five minutes or less in the middle of our staff meeting to talk about something that we think is really, really important, and we want you guys to be a part of that. Uh, we've been last week we talked about narrow the focus, and we said it's a two-parter. And a couple of things that we said we said that if we're going to narrow the focus, there are a couple things we can't be as a church. That there's there's certain things that we don't want to do. The first one was we don't want to have a menu philosophy. A menu philosophy was that idea where you kind of become the one-stop shop. Do you guys remember that? Um, And it's like you just have every single thing under the sun. I mean, every single thing, if some, you just have it. And that way, the idea behind it is the thinking that if we have everything, then everything, everyone will have something to uh, come to and we'll get more people, but it doesn't happen. Um, what is what is some of the things, the negative things that happen? What's one of the negative things that happens when you have a menu philosophy? Did you guys remember? What does it create in your volunteers and your staff? Burnout. 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 Yes, Jeff, it creates burnout. And uh, the reason that is because everybody's running around doing lots of different things. They're a part of lots of different things. They can't focus on anything, uh, any one thing. And we also said one of the things we don't want to do, or one of the things that's out there is a needs-based philosophy, needs-based philosophy. That idea was different than the menu philosophy. The needs-based philosophy was the people in your church, they've got needs. And every need that comes up, you create a new ministry for it. You create a new program. You create a new thing for it. Uh, what does that what does that create? What negative thing happens when you do a needs based philosophy for the people in your church? What did we say? It creates a what kind of church? An inward focus. Do you guys remember that? It creates an inward focused church because all you're worried about is the needs of the people inside your church. Now that's not a bad thing. It, we want to care about the needs of the people in our church, but when that's all we end up doing, then that creates um, some some friction. So if we believe that we can't be great at everything, we can't do every single ministry under the sun, how do we, how do we narrow the focus? Now there's lots of different ways. I'm going to talk about two ways to narrow the focus. Um, and the first one is this. Uh, I titled it Prune the Vine. You got to prune prune the vine. I started gardening three years ago, which is kind of funny because I realized I wasn't that good at gardening. And so I started reading about it a lot. Now, if you know anything about gardening, you know that uh, like I planted my bell pepper plant and I had all these, I had like 50 bell peppers, but they were all like, like this big. They were just tiny little bell peppers and I couldn't get them to grow. And I started reading and it said I needed to take like all the bell peppers off except for the one at the end. Take all the bell peppers off except for the one at the end. And when I started to do that, it started to allow energy and growth to go to that one bell pepper instead of the plant trying to feed 50 bell peppers. It was only doing about five to six bell peppers at a time. So all the energy was just filling up those uh, those individual bell peppers. And I, in John chapter 15, Jesus says this, And this is what he says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He says he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. And we all know that, right? When you're you're a gardener, if there's there's no fruit, you cut it off. But then Jesus says this, which I think is really cool. He says, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. And so the things in our life that even, even the good things in our life, Jesus is looking at us and going, hey, there's some good things that might be bearing fruit but I have something better for you. And he prunes us off and he helps us to grow in a certain area. So that, that not only works, I think, as individuals, I think that can work in our ministries as well. As well. And that in your ministries, there might be some things that they seem to be going good, but there's areas that you might need to prune a little bit to make other areas of your, of your ministry, of your area thrive. That man, this could really be killing it if I pruned a little bit of these areas, but these are doing good and you're gonna have people, well, yeah, but don't do that, don't do that. And you gotta prune a little bit to make one of your areas or two of your areas or three of your areas really, really, really thrive. And so you can kind of look at it that. Do we, do we wanna have 15 good ministries or do we wanna have five or six excellent, excellent ministries that are just thriving and really, really going for it? So that's one way to prune the vine. Uh, another thing that happens when you prune the vine, another way to do that is to build a team of specialists. That's the second thing. Build a team of specialists. And I think this is really, really important. You guys know this, that you're the best at something when that's the only thing you're doing. <laughs> when you're doing lots and lots of little things, 
you don't get to be as good at those things because you're just kind of average. We talked about that last last week that when you're when you're kind of good at a lot of things, you're not great at one thing. But when you start to narrow the focus in your ministries, you know what it does for your volunteers? It helps them to become specialists in their area as well. You want the best small group leaders? Just sign them up to be small group leaders. You want the best media people? Just sign them up to be media people. Now, in a perfect world, we'd have everybody doing one thing. We know that's not. But the less you have people doing, the, right. the more specialists you create. Okay? So this is a question I want to leave you with, and you can kind of think about it. Is there anything you're doing good in your ministry that is stopping you from doing something great? Is there anything that you're doing good that's stopping you from doing something great? We'll see you next week.